Everyone, Recording thanks for joining in progress. us. We've got Houston Dash Assistant Coach Ricky Clark here. We'll start with opening remarks, and then if you have a question, please raise your hand. Ricky, we'll start with opening remarks following tonight's match here against Orlando. Yeah, really proud of the team, to be honest. I mean, we spoke about the way that we wanted to come out and play on the front foot against one of the best teams in the league at the moment. And I think today was a sign of what we're trying to do and how we're trying to build as a team. And um, we're playing the best league in the world. And sometimes when you make mistakes, you get punished. And today we got punished. We made a mistake and we got punished. But incredibly proud to lead this team at the moment. Um, yeah, tough game, but proud. Thank you for that. We'll start with Herman here, then go here to Diego. Hey, Ricky. Hey. I wanted to ask you two quick questions about the game. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like the dash struggled with the press uh, from Orlando early on in yeah. the first half. What adjustments did you make uh, at halftime to combat that in the second half? Well, to be honest with you, I think it was the opposite. I think they struggled with our build-out initially, and they changed their press. They, they started with two, and then they struggled to control our wide centre backs and then they push our Adriana higher and then that made it a problem for us because then it become 3v3 at the back and we spoke at half time about Jane dropping in maybe to be an option for us but overall we knew the space was going to be in the wide areas against them and um, at times we took advantage of that but in terms of their press I actually thought based on the way that they've played against other teams I thought it was gentle to be honest. And the second question I have is uh, the reasoning for the Alozi coming in at 45th minute halftime sub for Ordonez, the reasoning behind that sub and? To get after him. Like just to get after him, you know? Like our, the, the way we look at things is right now we're trying to win games. So how can, we, how can we change games? How can we get after teams? We don't want to come here and sit and watch teams play in our, in our stadium. So it was to ask questions of them not them ask questions of us. And um, it was just a simple change. They both work incredibly hard. They're both unbelievable athletes and professionals, but it was like, how can we make this difficult for them? And that was, that was the idea behind the change. Thank you. We'll go right here. Hey, Ricky. Uh, yeah. I just want to talk defensively. It seemed like you guys were a brick wall today, almost not letting past any shot that Orlando attempted. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about um, the, well, kind of new additions of uh, Jane and Tarsi back into the lineup after they're running the Olympics? Yeah, listen, you know, they've, 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 they've jumped straight back into the group. The groups, I think for a long time now, we've been getting progressively better and better and we've been addressing little things that we can be better at. But for us, it's all about principles. And, you know, I think what you're seeing at the moment is us trying to stick to those principles as much as we can. But I also think what you're seeing is us defending like higher up the field. So when the ball eventually gets to the back line, it's more us in 1v1, 2v2, uh, 2v2, even 3v2 situations where we're able to help each other a little bit more. But the work from the front players at the moment is the highest it's been. And I think that's making it a little bit more manageable for our back line, but let's let's absolutely clean this up. I thought our back line was brilliant tonight. Tarsi to step in and play against Barbara Banda the way she played at the age of 20. I mean, the kid's going to be one of the best the best central defenders in the league. And speaking about her physicality, I mean, she she looked like an absolute powerhouse mm. um, going in for each and every tackle. What, what, do you th what would you like the other players on the roster to look after that? Well, listen, I think she's got a little bit of everything. I mean, she's Brazilian, right? She loves the ball at her foot as well. Like when we play in practice like she, and we play small-sided games, Tarsi's the one trying to clip the ball into the top corner. You wouldn't think she's a centre-back if you come to our training sessions. So she's got a little bit of everything. She's got a little bit of bite. She's got a little bit of competing, physical pace and speed. But she also wants to play. She wants to build with a ball. But listen, you've also got players like Nat and Paige playing around her that are helping her, but at the same time, giving us options to build out the back. Not many teams come out and try and build against Orlando. A lot of the times it's very direct. And I think tonight what you saw was we tried to do a little bit of both. We tried to do a little bit of both. And for us, we're fortunate. We got the ability to change our wing backs. We got the ability for players to come into the back line. If you look at the summer series, JY played really well in the back line. So right now, if I'm being completely honest with you, when I'm choosing a team, it's incredibly difficult. We got players who are playing at a high level. And for me, it's about making tough decisions. 
Coach, good evening. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we'll let you get a drink, Coach, of course. You deserve it. Um, earlier, we're talking about the defense, but talk to us about what we can all learn. It's often today in the match, I found watching only Tarsi versus Banda and both of them being excellent footballers. There's a difference in age and experience, but I got lost in the way they were preparing on both sides of the ball. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I think it goes back to, for us, it was all about how can we play around Orlando. There was times when we knew if we played central, we would make it difficult for ourselves. But we talk about courage a lot. We talk about playing with courage, and courage is doing something you know, it, you know is difficult, but you do it anyway. And if we can play with that mentality and we can play with that control and we can control the tempo, draw teams in and find the pockets, we're going to be okay. But you also have to, when you're playing against players like Banda and <laughs> let's not forget Marta, we know that if it's one pass wrong, one person in the wrong position, that they're going to potentially bury us. And I think that's what happened in the first half. They never really played around us in the first half. They never really played through us. It was a lot of transition moments from us giving the ball away. And we spoke about that at half time. We said, hey, if we cut out the transitional moments, it's going to be a different game in the second half. And it was, I think, up until the goal. When they scored, they made it very difficult for us. That's why they're one of the best, best teams in the league at the moment. Speaking of transition, coach, from defense to attack on, on the dash team, I see improvement, but there's still times when there's really not many options there. What, yeah. what, what are you working on to make that more of a collective move? Does, yeah. is, is that a fair question? I don't know if I agree with it, but I'll, fair answer, enough. You, I'll answer your question. No, I just, think, I just think there's times, again, it goes back to we're playing the best league in the world. And one of the things we spoke about, one of the points that was on the board before the game was, you have to have the ability to adapt. And at times you have to realize that we won't play, we won't be able to do what we want to do, and how do we adapt, how do we find another way? And I think today that was perhaps one of our challenges. We definitely had shape, we played from side to side. Second half we spoke about being a little bit more vertical and playing with depth. But in general, I think I was very proud of the fact that we, you know, we, we stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best teams in the league right now. Hi, Ricky. Hey. Um, I wanted to talk about something at the end of the game. Andressa sinks to the floor. Yeah. She looks really upset. Few people come over, you know, wish her the best, say, you know, that miss doesn't really matter. I mean, the result, but the miss, yeah, I think, yeah, was probably playing in her mind. You come over, you pick her up, and you say, well, I guess that's my question. What did you say to her and kind of like, what did you see in that moment at the end where she was kind of isolated on her own on the floor? Well, listen, you know, um, I think the, the momentum of the game, if we score at that point, it changes everything. But one thing I would say is Andres has been there and done it. She's played at the biggest clubs in the world. She's performed at the biggest clubs in the world. She's played on the world stage. And there's times when they're, they're a human. You know, they get upset. They're just, they're just humans as well as players, they're just humans. And you have to recognize those moments. And I went over to her and I said, get your head up, we move on to the next game. For us, it's all about one game at a time at the moment. We weren't thinking about if we win, we move into this position. It was like, when we play Orlando on Friday, this is what we're gonna do. And now Orlando's done, we move that to the side and we move on to Utah and focus on Utah. But for Andressa, you know, she, she, she just can create something out of nothing. You know, and she's so passionate. She works incredibly hard. You know, it's fun. We have a, we have a funny um, relationship in terms of she's always complaining about my referee calls. And I talk to her about, hey, you know, I got the whistle, be careful. So we have a good relationship. And I just wanted her to get up, you know, next time we get that, we get that header. Next time we get the next, the finish and we move on. We move on to Utah. And just a little bit more on kind of the mood in that huddle at the end, like what other emotions were you seeing from other players, maybe some players down, some players up, some players looking for pride? What were the kind of other features of the group at full time? Well, I think, I think if you was in the huddle, you would have probably seen a group that knows that they pushed them all the way, you know, and that's all we ask for. We speak about like trying to make sure that when people walk off this field that their lungs are burning because they've given everything against us. 
I got to tell you, there's going to be probably a few people in the um, treatment room for Orlando. It's going to be a few stiff legs when they get off the plane in, in Orlando. And that's what we wanted to do, right? We didn't want to come here and sit back and let a team try and dictate to us. And I think tonight, one of the things you see was us get after them and make it incredibly difficult. They didn't play the way they wanted to play. They played different. They changed their press in the first half. These are all things that we can reflect and say, we've done an unbelievable job. And in the huddle at the end, I said to the group, it's exactly what I said to the group. If you give the club that commitment, we will move up this table. No shadows, no shadows of a doubt. We will move up the table if we play with that type of commitment. So I, that's what I expect. We set the bar, we set standards. We talk about being accountable to standards all the time and the team set the bar. You know, we're back, we're gonna get after it, we're gonna get after Utah and we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna feel sorry for ourselves. That's not happening in this house. Anything else for Ricky before we wrap up? Danny? Hi, Ricky, Danny. Well, first of all, as you said, defens defensively, you have a great team. Mm. And we've seen it improve during the season. From today, what do you take thinking on the next game offensively? Because mm. you can tell the change of the plays that the players made after the first call on the second half. Yeah, yeah. So what else are you expecting there to close that last third of the field? Well, listen, I think the top teams are able to score in different ways, you know, and I felt like in the first half we did a really good job of finding the free player on the weak side, but you have to, you have to keep teams honest. It's find the player on the weak side, then find the gap and play forwards. It's come and get it feet, spinning behind, find the, find the player on the weak side that's free. And for us, it's just a, I think it's a, it's a, the challenge for us is finding that balance. Like, how do we keep teams honest, whether we play short, whether we play in behind, whether we play into wide areas and try and overload teams in wide areas. And this is just an evolution of our game. If you watch us, I think tonight, it was such exciting moments. You know, like I was jumping up and down in the technical box, I turn around, the fans got their hands on their heads. This is the type of soccer you want to see in this stadium. And I think we're delivering that. The best teams deliver it consistently. And that's the thing we talk about, consistency, consistency, consistency. And if we're not good at times, we work hard and we get through it. And I think in terms of our attacking um, play tonight, there was, there was really good moments. There was chances, you know. <laughs> For us, it's just about putting it together. And I, I'm, I'm convinced it's going to happen. Convinced it's going to happen. Okay, I think we'll wrap up with that one. Ricky, thank you very much. Appreciate it, folks.